Every year, I get messages into the hotel inspector inbox. Oh, my God. But this year, there are unprecedented numbers. I feel like I'm going to my doom. From businesses of all sorts up and down the land. Don't put this on telly, whatever you do. People are more desperate than they've ever been before. We want to stay, we don't want to go. Oh, Spiralling costs. I'm now paying £139 daily. Stove shortages. Don't start breaking my kitchen. She's pushing me to the edge. Impossible guests. If you give budget accommodation, you get budget people. Oh, This is why we're not making any money, Mark. These businesses are telling me that they're facing imminent closure. If you're not making money, what's the bloody point? Everything from hotels and B&Bs. I mean, what is going on here? It's... Just not! To tourist attractions. Dinner made for four. <laughs> the mammoth tusk. And wedding venues. The wedding of your dreams, madam. That for many of these businesses, it's just too late. Life isn't kind to us lot in this industry. It's a really terrifying situation to be in. I'd hate to rob you of two testicles. But there are some that still have some hope. This time, I hope it'll be worth it in the end. If it's not, I'll be pretty pissed off. It's do or die. Why are you being so sodding patronising? For a prehistoric visitor attraction... Most people do come in and they go... <laughs> it's shock <laughs> horror <laughs> rather than awe that could soon be a thing of the past. I've got a fossil addiction. I'm starting to think I'm too old for all this, I tell you. <laughs> Stump Cross Cabins, an historic visitor attraction lying deep beneath the Yorkshire Dales. You need to wear your hard hat. Owned, run and home to former children's nurse Lisa. We had wolverine bones found here. Really vicious. They can take out a whole moose. And joined more recently by her fiancé and gift shop manager, Nick. Polishing your balls, darling. Trying to make it glisten and sparkle. The mile-long limestone cave system has been open to the public since its discovery in 1860. Now the attraction boasts its own cinema, gift shop, cafe and outdoor play area. It is a national treasure, it's heritage, and it's a massive responsibility, it's isn't it? It's a commitment that 54-year-old Lisa is willing to go all out for. This outfit cost over £3,000 for the outfit. Beanie sharples, eat your heart out. And get my fossil belt on, my mammoth tusk. <laughs> I love educating the children and the families. It's what I'm passionate about. Lisa's passion for all things ancient doesn't end at dressing up. We have a full box of dinosaur poo here as well. She's equally as enthusiastic about stocking the gift shop. So we spend about £50,000 a year on gems and fossils. It's a sentiment not shared by the most recent addition to the team, son and finance director, Ollie. They did have some fossilised crabs. Do you think we need to get one of those? How much is that going to cost? £250. It's my job to kind of say no to all the time, pretty much. Now, after 20 years of giving everything to the cause, this family business is facing an uncertain future. How's it looking? Today's been pretty quiet, to be honest. Um, I mean, only 64 quid through the cave. We appear to be very busy. You know, we, we think you're, you're doing really well. Yeah, and, the, and, the and tills are going. Tills are going, ching, ching, ching. and then so, well, this has lost money, and that's lost, lost money, and it's like, what? How, how can that possibly be? It's so destroy it. The economic crises of recent years have taken their toll and have bled Lisa dry of all her assets and savings. The main debt is the mortgage, which is 400,000 still. And the second biggest debt is to mum, 270 odd thousand. There's nothing else. There's nothing else left. But pushing this attraction into profit still seems impossible. Unless we increase that revenue, we're going to be screwed pretty much. I feel like we're swimming against the tide. How much more can we actually take? I can't do 15 hours a day, you know, day in, day out. She does worry me in the fact that, you know, she does not stop. I am worried she'll burn herself out, no question. Clearly, things aren't right, and basically, we're getting nowhere. 
If the family can't find a way to make their visitor attraction pay, the next summer season could be their last. It's for the children, it's for our current and future generations and we've put our heart and soul into it. It's so important to keep it here. With the cave attraction and their family home facing the threat of extinction, I find myself on a more unusual rescue mission in the Yorkshire Dales. Anybody who knows me will know that there's two things I really hate. One is heights and the other is depths. So <laughs> I'm not entirely looking forward to this. The Yorkshire Dales has been a tourist hotspot for centuries and now generates over 300 million pounds of revenue each year. Gosh, what a busy car park. I wasn't expecting this, I must say. So certainly their problem doesn't look like visitor numbers anyway. It's an encouraging start, but this isn't my usual territory, so I won't make any judgments based on first impressions. Aha! Uh -huh. Although it's hard not to when confronted with a Flintstone. Is this how you always dress on a Tuesday? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Hi, Lisa. Nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you, Alex. Hi. How are you? Very attractive, may I say. <laughs> I'm really excited. <laughs> Why is it so busy? It's half term. Why do you want me here? To be honest, we're absolutely exhausted. We've done loads of things to bring people in and the tills are chinging away, chinging away and we get loads of money in the bank and we're like, oh, this is amazing, amazing, and then it goes out. So there's nothing left. I'm dying to talk to you more, but I think the first thing I should do is look at the cave. And then I'll come and look around all of this. First impressions of Lisa and Nick are charming. They're clearly passionate, and that's a great start. But passion without business sense in any sector can be a recipe for disaster. Hi, I'm Hello. Alex. Ollie, nice to meet you. How are you doing? I'm not madly Fantastic. keen on being underground. How deep are we going? You're going 50 feet. Oh, 50 it's not feet. too bad. I can handle 50 feet. Yeah. I might know my stalagmites from my stalactites. Ah, oh, the glamour. But as my first time as the cave inspector, I'm going to immerse myself in the full visitor experience. There we go. And try to keep an open mind. Immediately confused by the plants and things like that. Is this supposed to be the kind of plants that there were in the prehistoric age? I very much doubt they'd have been down in caves. Cave pirates, so already I'm confused. I am slightly nervous, but we've got to put our big boy pants on yeah. and, um, you know, listen to what she has to say. The cave itself is stunning. So you made it to me, the almighty Timmy, the trilobite at the butcher shop. Well, I don't really understand why Timmy, the trilobite, and the butcher shop have been put together. Why is it called the butcher shop? <clears throat> Why on earth is there a shark with his head pointing out from the cave? You know, I know this was a shallow tropical sea. Got that. But I don't particularly like this just depiction. I don't like the combination of the slightly babyish descriptions that are really badly lit. It's not clear who any of these installations are aimed at, but it all feels like a kiddie's playground. This is a wonderful, wonderful chamber. It's amazing. And yet, we have dinner laid for four. <laughs> dinner table for four. But also, this, why have they chosen right here to put this enormous sign so that you can't properly see what's behind it? I don't like any of the signage here. I don't like the way it's been done. I don't like this, and I certainly don't like that. So I've got a bit to get my teeth into. As far as visitor experiences go, this natural wonder leaves a lot to be desired. Right. And as I'm channeled through into the central gift shop, I'm faced with an array of overflowing cabinets, shelves and random tables. Just in this little area, I have skulls, I have sheep, <laughs> I have baseball caps. <laughs> There's too much stock. I mean, there doesn't seem to be a lot of cohesion, let's put it that way. 
it seems the confused approach I found below ground has also consumed this bit of the business. There's a lot of things that look quite nice. There's a whole lot of things that look really crap. Call to the rescue of a cave visitor attraction in the heart of the Yorkshire Dales. Do you know what is a cave? After 20 years as cavern custodians, the family in residence has hit rock bottom. It not only takes every ounce of energy, it actually <laughs> takes all your cash as well. After a morning spent assessing the bewildering cavern exhibits and shop... Well, this looks like something one of the Flintstones would have eaten anyway. <laughs> I wonder what the cafe offering will reveal. I'd love to know whether some of the more extravagant stuff that's on the menu, like the fettuccine pasta and the chicken teaser salad, whether those items actually sell. The choice of dishes feels as haphazard as the approach to both the shop and caves. So I can't quite understand their menu ethos. I think it is a cafe. It's not a restaurant. The scale and confusion of this business is beginning to sink in. Who is this place aimed at? What is the story that hangs it all together? I'm amazed at how little information there is, at how little attempt to educate there is, how much slop there is all around the place, frankly. No matter what the business, in hospitality, people want to know what they're paying for. I think it's time for me to confront the brains behind this setup. Aha, cave woman. Hello. Hi. I want to know what it is, more or less, that you do in here. It's just so nice to come in here with all the children and families, and I briefly explain to them that there's different types of caves, and then I use my fossils to teach about the caves. And what but do they pay for? It? Five pounds each. Someone told me that you're wearing a very expensive outfit. I don't want to look like somebody's drunk Saturday night. Are you avoiding telling me how much this costs? So the whole thing, with my <laughs> coat and skins, was £3,000. <gasps> but... Yes. In my defence, I wear it all the time. Yeah, but that, they're only paying you five pounds. Yeah. Which means it would take 600 customers to cover the cost of that Flintstone get-up. It looks like I've just stumbled across one of the major problems in this business. Come and sit down. Lisa's focus on entertaining children is clearly taking precedence over profit. I'm going to try not to get cross with you, but... I need you to understand something. All of this, fun as it is, mm. is kind of the decoration to the nuts and bolts, the machinery yeah. Yeah. that drives this business. Yeah. Because if you don't have the caves, you won't be cave yeah. woman. Who does all the buying? We do. Yeah, I've got a fossil addiction. I would be very interested if you told me how much stock you've bought last year and how much you sold last year <coughs> and what the overall profit was. It, it, over to Oliver with that. He, ha he has all the numbers. Okay. We spent a lot of money. Yeah. But, you know, I must admit, most people do come in and they go, wow. It's shock horror <laughs> rather than awe. <laughs> I, I don't know how else to tell you. <laughs> it's, um, I hope you don't think this is mean of me to say, but mm. there hasn't been much of a master plan. I would agree with that. Yeah. In fact, it looks like there's been 20 years of throwing good money after bad, and this has to stop immediately. I just think, you know, yeah. you've got to be adults yeah. about your business. Yeah. What I would like you to do is to promise me faithfully yeah. not to spend any money. Oh. And then the rest is more complicated. But just stop sure, spending sure, yeah. is a start. I don't say this lightly because I know how hard you have to work to keep a business like this going for 20 years, but I just feel like giving them a good shake at this point. It looks to me like they've made quite a lot of expensive mistakes. If I'm to save this cave attraction, I need to quickly understand what part of the business works and what doesn't. And as Nick and Lisa seem oblivious to the figures... Hi. Hello, how are you doing? I'm hoping son and money man Ollie can enlighten me. I'm counting on you to make sense of a few things for me. Mm -hmm. First, I want to know what the business model is here. Mum, who's come from a children's nurse background, her best moments are when she's making the kids happy and stuff. So you can see that in the way that 
the place has been run. Well, that explains quite a lot. If you look at the pattern, I know you've only been here two years, but do you know, was there a year when you made a profit, when this made a profit? Yeah, about ten years ago. Gosh. With so many strands to this business, I need to work out how best I can help each one. Somewhere that I think you've got a problem is the cafe. Um, I don't know. <laughs> this is even better. Oh, no, don't. I didn't mean to laugh. It made a gross loss of minus 3,250 quid in the last 12 months. I mean, when's the last time you sold a pasta? We don't. Really. Well, why is it on the menu then? Well, what uh, about a chicken Caesar salad? We rarely sell those, really. Streamlining the menu is the easy part. Rescuing the rest of this business, I suspect, will be much more complicated. Now, the other thing that I have my doubts about is the shop. A revenue of 118,000 in the last 12 months. Uh, a shop staff cost of 44,000, oh, which is 38% of revenue. Yeah. So um, that gets you with a 12% gross margin. The average gross profit margin of any gift shop should be 50%, so their shop is massively underperforming. Darling, the shop looks incredibly crowded to me. So the last stock weight take we did, it was a retail price of over 200 grand was was the stock take on the shelves. To have 200 grand in stock is a luxury you can't really afford. It's a very seasonal business. You know, the school holidays, 12 weeks a year, plus your weekends, the only times you actually do make net profit, you know, um, with all those operating expenses that we have. August, you make 90% of your net profit for the entire year in Gosh. one month because there is absolutely no financial cushion I know. In, the, in the bank account. OK. Um, how do you try and get new people in? What is your marketing strategy? We don't really do any of the marketing within Google, Facebook and a little bit of radio advertising here and there. The more I hear, the more I cannot believe this business has survived this long. OK. I think I need to sleep on this. But I think the main thing that we have to do is start thinking of it as one business and that every single bit of that business has got to pull in the same direction. Oh, God. Well, what a day. There's an awful lot to do. My goodness. Successful businesses are run by clear-sighted business people and they've got to learn that skill pretty quickly. It's been really good. You know, I, I, was, I was a little bit anxious this morning. A little bit. I think we tried to be all things to all men, yeah. don't we, really? Yeah, and we yeah. it's, it's pretty hard. So the bank card's so... been cut up now. Yeah. <laughs> so no more spending. Um, you know, I'm, it's my job to sell all this. Yeah. So, uh, well, our job. Our Teamwork. job. Teamwork. I mean, she's been great, but... I think I need a pint after this, you know. It was a really big day yesterday. I was left with a lot to think about. I tossed and turned during the night thinking about what on earth I was going to tackle first. To give this business its best chance to survive and thrive, I need to address the problems throughout the entire attraction. But after 20 years, Lisa and co are blind to the issues here, so I need to give them a short, sharp shock. Let's go. Starting in the caves. I cannot understand why this, which should be the entry into the magical kingdom, mm. is so pedestrian. Are they supposed to be plants that grew in the Mesozoic era? I want that sense of wonder, of yeah. awe, of, you know, mystery. Yeah. All that is just not here. So this is where the miners first broke in, back in 1860. I mean, uh, immediately, that makes it interesting to me. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just a bloody grate. <laughs> I mean, come on. Let's go down. Let's go. Come on. OK, first of all, why is it called Butcher Shop? So they called it the butcher's shop because they believe it looks like sides of meat. But do you not think that someone might want to know that when they come down here? Yeah. And also, why are you being so sodding patronising? Timmy the trilobite. Just to bring the imagination of the children alive, really. That detracts from anyone serious who yeah. actually has come here because it's a prehistoric fucking cave. Yeah. I'll tell you the rest upstairs. Another area that's definitely not reaching its full potential is the shop. We've got so much stuff everywhere. 
I think you want to look like you're a bit more special. Yeah. yeah. It's all got to be toned right back. Yeah. And the same goes for the cafe. I've got a suggestion for you which might help. Anything that doesn't sell, take off the menu. Yeah. Make sure that your menu pricing is correct. Yeah. But I think you have got to sit down and make some really tough decisions. Yeah. I think it would be silly to underestimate the amount of energy it's going to take to effect proper change here. To improve each department will be a huge undertaking. So, as this isn't my usual territory, I've invited Tim Rusby, a visitor attraction expert, to tour the cabins and help formulate a plan. Problems are the same wherever you go. This is a really difficult business. It takes courage, it takes commitment. For many people, it's a, it's, it's a lifetime's endeavour to make a successful visitor attraction. Hi, Tim. How have you found it? I've been inspired by the place, yet it lacks clarity and it lacks structure. And there is one thing that I think I could do for you. I'd like to help rewrite the interpretation strategy down in the caves in a way that makes sense for kids and brings the story alive for adults. I am so incredibly grateful to you. I don't, know how to, I don't know how to thank you enough. I think it would make a world of difference. There's no doubt that helping this attraction to reach its full potential will be a mammoth task. But with the cave interpretation in Tim's capable hands and the summer season fast approaching, I need to square my shoulders and commit to a master plan. I understand that it's not all going to be achievable necessarily within the time we've got together, but I think it's really important that we sign up to the way forward. Firstly, they need to broaden their market beyond families and children and, crucially, extend their season further than the school holidays. I'm astonished at the fact that you have so little contacts marketing-wise. A really cursory glance at the Yorkshire Tourist Board shows millions of visitors. A lot of them are not during the summer. So I'm putting that firmly on your shoulders. Next, I want to make sure that the shop is streamlined and fit for purpose. I came here today yeah. intending fully to spend some money, but I struggled to find stuff because, oh, you know, do I want an elephant or do I want a rabbit kind of thing. So I think the shop is the difficult bit mm. because there's a big reorganisation that needs doing. I'm not saying you have to get rid of anything. Yeah. I'm just saying you need to put a whole load of stuff, maybe even 50% in the storeroom. Mm. I am prepared to look at doing the visual merchandising, but not while there is so much stuff in the shop. Mm -hmm. And finally, with Tim's help, both children and adults should be able to fully appreciate this natural wonder. What I think that you have got to have is a good story well told, and that is where I'm going to try and help you. Rewrite the story wow, and what amazing. you might put at yeah. every aspect of the game yeah. so that actually what you have is a kind of world-class interpretation of what yeah. people are seeing. Yeah. You have a lot of work to do. Yeah. But I think it is doable. Yeah. yeah. We'll set this beast in motion. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. We've tried absolutely everything that we can think of. It gets to a point that if it's not making money, that you have to close it. There's no other way. So Alex really is our last hope. There's nothing left in the bank. There's nothing left to sell. They have to make this work, because otherwise they won't still be owning Stump Cross Caverns come a year's time. Right, you ready for this? Yes. Deep beneath the Yorkshire Dales, it's all systems go. Oh, dear. When I left Lisa, fiancé Nick and son Ollie, I gave them an enormous to-do list. Got it now. Just plonk it there. <sighs> to clear out any confusing and patronising tat from the caves. The things you do for the love of a cave. Yeah, I'm anxious, but... You know, we're just going to have to do what we need to do. 
I'm sorry, fairies, I love you. To begin a brand new marketing campaign. So we've got Yorkshire Tourist Board coming here. Hi there. Good morning. So this is our cinema room. It's just up here now to our Wolverine cave. We can certainly help you with your reach to our members. Create a simple, more profitable menu. So we've changed the menu a lot. This was a steal from Alex because we were finding it was costing us a lot to serve the food up. And perhaps hardest of all, to reduce the contents of the shop by a whopping 50%. Do we actually sell these? Yeah, we do. Which Lisa is finding surprisingly easy. One of the plastic plants, like they can go. I must admit, I've been a, a bit shocked um, at what we're having to do to it. But it's proving a much greater challenge for shopkeeper Nick. To be honest, I don't think you've sold any of those, and it's tat. Maybe they're in the wrong place. So if you leave one or two or ev everything out, we're still going to be 75% off. You need to be ruthless. We need 50% left in the shop. So as hard as that may be, we have to do. Gosh, that looks different, doesn't it? I hate. I'm just, I'm just processing it. Outside, Tim's all-important story display boards for the caves have arrived. The new information boards, wow, I can't wait. I saw that been delivered and I had, yeah. a, I had a sneaky peek inside the wrapping, but I, I can't wait to see them on the walls down there. And the shop is finally clear enough for my designer, Claire, with the help of visual merchandiser, Kat... Stop here. Yeah. ..to curate a display that will inspire visitors to spend money and hopefully increase their pitiful 12% GP. The shop is quite a big job. We've cut the legs off the tables so we can create a staggering layered effect in the shop. We are now going through and changing over all the cardboard boxes for nice wooden boxes and where the hero products will go and how to best display all that we still have in there. Now, six weeks after my first visit, with the start of the summer tourist season just days away, I'm back to help execute the final stages of the plan. It's incredibly important that these two days go well, because there's no plan B. Um, I've thrown everything I can at this, and also I've called in some really big guns to help me. I found it a little difficult with everybody coming in and, and totally dismantling the shop, I'll be honest with you. Really excited to see what Alex thinks. More excited than scared, but uh, that could change. Good morning! Hello. Hello! Lovely to see you. How's everything been? Well, it's, we've been very busy. There's been a few visual changes, hasn't there? Yeah. Um, and then we've done a lot with, like, the marketing and all that sort of side. Oh, good, because um, that's really key to my next couple of days, because yeah. I'm really hopeful that we find ways to extend your season out of it and, and make it a bit more viable. Come on, let's go. As well as extending the visitor season, I want to maximise the profits in the shop. Gosh. Well, it looks very, very cleared. Yeah. It's amazing. Do you have a stock room absolutely full of... Yeah. it pretty much. And as I've already banned all spending on extra stock... I must have saved you a little bit of money. Probably at least £20,000 already. No. Yeah, honestly. Normally, getting ready for the holidays, because we are both guilty of wanting it full, 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 mm. full... We're yeah. always frightened of running short yeah. of things. I haven't gone on my gut instinct. I've yeah. gone on tried and tested methods. Yeah. Mm. And I'm hoping that you are going to really see the difference. Yeah. There endeth the lesson. Oh, my gosh, I'm really excited. It's time to get stuck in and help my team to bring this gift shop to life. I wouldn't do for a clamshell. I am quite enjoying myself. Bringing order into chaos is literally like my favourite thing to do in the whole world. I mean, I'm just chucking them on, darling. You put them yeah. as you know how to do it, because yeah. I really don't. One of the biggest selling tools in any shop is its display. It's starting to look really nice, darling. There's a few things that I'm really tempted to buy now. 
A good display is a form of silent customer service that helps you decide what to buy. Anything that's in orange? Yes. To change it to the white. We've got some white, white. cards, oh. yeah. Crucial to its success is a prime selling space or lead-in zone. Our expert visual merchandiser, Cat knows all the tricks of the trade. Can you tell me, and Nick, <laughs> why it is that you've put specific things in specific places yeah, and well, why it's laid out like this? What happens is your customer is coming in from the car park so they're on a bit of a mission and they're walking quite fast here. So what we need to do is leave them a bit of space to decompress, which right. we call the decompression zone. And then you actually only have five or six seconds to grab someone's attention to make them stop and look. So we need that zone for them to decompress, then a beautiful display to make them stop and look at everything. Then what we've done is created this tiered effect with the tables mm. and the crate and we call that the stadium effect and what that does is it really draws your eye from All down here mm. to these items to this one right up so you see everything and you take it all in and then on this fixture here we've created um like a coordinated story really of items that go together i see and this really helps um customers make multiple sales which will just increase your revenue so right. they might come we, and we buy. like a multiple sale. yes yeah so they might come and think oh that's a beautiful okay. um ammonite but then yeah. pick up a book about fossils at the and same get time. And ammonite too, possibly. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's really um, created a story for them. You know, I had this misconception that what I'd done was 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 good, was okay, and then um, obviously Kat and the team have come in today and altered things drastically. Uh, and uh, I have to say, I've learnt an awful lot. With the shop in good hands, it's finally time to reveal to the family the new signs in the caves below. Ah, oh, here you go. Wow. Previously, the entrance to the caves was uninspiring, with no tangible sense of purpose or story. Oh Amazing. My I love Lord. that. Goodness Absolutely me. Absolutely love it. And the thing that I really like about it is the fact that it's really simple. Now it's clear that by entering these caves, visitors will be taking a journey through time. You know, look how old the earth is. Yeah. And look how young we are. Yeah, and it's mad. No. Good. Gone are the patronising and childish displays. Oh, wow. I love that. Carved by nature. Replaced by signs telling the story of the cave's formation and discovery. We used to sort of whiz past, and it's like, stop, look. Yeah. And now that is going to make them stop and look. Enhancing the customer experience every step of the way. What I love is that the it actually points out the sleeping cat now as well. Yeah. Where is the miss. sleeping yeah. cat? Oh my gosh! That's amazing! Yeah. Reindeer Cavern preserving the past. Wow. This was the last cavern to be opened up for public in 2000. I mean, it is amazing. <laughs> yeah. I think the brief was that we wanted to tell the story of yeah. the caves better yeah. and yeah. hopefully we've managed to achieve yeah. that. Absolutely. <laughs> With improvements happening to the shop and caves, it's time to present the final part of the master plan. OK, so one of the reasons that we've got so much to do today is because I want you guys to be showing at your best tomorrow. I've invited representatives from a kind of diverse group of possible businesses that you could have dealings with. I want yeah. everyone to turn up, think, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Good. OK. Fine, then. Is that all right? Fantastic. Perfect. Thank Good. You These representatives could hold the key to trade beyond the school holidays. But as they'll be here in a matter of hours, it's time to dig deep. Could be a late night tonight. It's more the label writing that I'm worried about. Nick's got a lot to do. <laughs> Keep going faster, faster! <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you got anything that I can just stun this hedgehog on? I'm always determined to get things done, and I don't give up easily. I hope it'll be worth it in the end. If it's not, I'll be pretty pissed off. Yeah. At 
the cave attraction in Yorkshire, it's crunch time. We've got loads of businesses coming that Alex has lined up. I just think it's such a fantastic opportunity that we've been given. Um, so I think we just need to grab it with both hands and, and take it, really. There's quite a lot riding on today. So far, they've tackled every challenge I've thrown at them, the family, with a lot of grace under pressure. Let's hope they don't fall at this last hurdle. This is the family's first chance to sow the seeds for future business, which could generate an income through the winter months. So they must make a good impression. Morning, all. Was it nice walking into the shop this morning? Amazing. Amazing. Good. Unbelievable. The once confusing shop with overstuffed shelves full of mismatched knickknacks has been transformed. Now there's a clear and coordinated display leading your eye through curated areas that each tell their own story. I can't believe the difference, really. I want to buy something. I think I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping my improvements to the shop and caves will help increase profits during the upcoming school holiday season. But in the long term, their ultimate success will rely on year-round trade. With the buffet option, I think it's so without further ado... The time has come to go and meet these businesses. So we've actually prepared the buffet so we can showcase that to all the guests that are coming. That's a good um, idea. That's, that's a premium. really good yeah. idea. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. OK, good. I've invited everyone from gin distillers and geology students to tour guides and racecourse reps who all could generate off-season trade. Right, well, if they like what they see. Sir, okay. your audience awaits. Fantastic. Uh, welcome to Stump Cross Caverns. So, uh, we hope you really enjoy your day with us today. Lots of little surprises for you in store. This way, please. Hello. Not only is this exercise important for attracting business, it needs to be the start of a new mentality for this family. Do you want to come down and have a look at this amazing sign? Starting with the boss. In the last Ice Age, we did have the Wolverines roaming around. And sadly, it's not you, Jackman. <laughs> I think this is really important for Lisa because through this whole process I've been telling her that she has to start thinking of this as a business rather than just a passion project. So if you want to come up this way, guys. I'm hoping she's keeping that in mind as she's going round. So have you had a look at the Iron Curtain? So this is totally natural. It's the water that's created the shapes in here. Whilst Ollie is trying to keep things on track in the cafe's kitchen... We're only, we're only slightly behind the, the schedule, but... Um... We've got all hands on deck now, so we're just getting the last final preparations done and then we'll be serving it. It seems that Lisa has turned from cavewoman... So now, you're deep underneath the field opposite Stump Cross Caverns. It's like two and a half double decker buses up to the top of the surface. ..to businesswoman. Well, thank you all so much for coming and um, we shall go and see if lunch is served and then we can all get together and see how we can all help each other. So far, so positive. It's bad when we get the people fed, because I know they're healthy, right? Yes. But back on the surface, things aren't going quite so well. The buffet isn't ready, and Nick and Ollie are nowhere to be seen. What's going on here? Is this the sack? I it's not. Is there any space I can leave it there? I need it to be out. In, yeah. Not under the lights. Not under the lights, no. I'm sorry. Well, they shouldn't be spending time doing that. They need to yeah. be out there. Yeah. I mean, you know, everyone hiding in the back. No one except Lisa talking to the customers. Food out late. You know, just it kind of beggars belief. After 20 years in residence, they're about to blow their first ever networking opportunity, and all our hard work will be for nothing. Can we take out what we've got ready? Yeah, do you yeah, think? yeah. We're yeah. done. We're done now. We're uh, just literally final preparations. I know. We're... I just, I'm worried that we won't keep them. So it looks like it's down to me to try and drum up some business. How do you think that they should be involved with Visit York? What do you think you could do? So there's so much we can do. Press releases, um, any sort of offers they've got on, they can tell us about. We're, we're from a university, and I think there's a real opportunity to offer climate science work here. You're a tourist guide. Yes, so it's been fascinating to see just what can be offered now, to see what amazing things are doing with the place. Until finally... 
Right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being so patient. Um, plates are there for you, and uh, enjoy your lunch. Thank you very much, thank you. I think they have to go and do go on a real charm offensive now. Talk to people. How are we doing? How are you doing, John? It's, it's, it's great to have everyone. It here. Is. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's good, good to see everyone. Great, we can all support each other. But no, I'm definitely, definitely up for that. I'll get Oliver to have a chat with you as well because he's really into it. Do you live on the fences? Yeah, well, the house is just here. Yeah, so it's just tacked on the end here, so we're never away from it, you know. Lisa's talking over there, Nick's over there, good. Ollie's over there, finally, we've got all three of them actually engaging with customers, and that's really important. That is what is going to make this work. But I was saying, looking at the possibility of sponsorship. Oh, wow, let me come round. I'll come in. Everyone's got a smile on their face. They've been well fed and they've been well watered. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. We do appreciate Thanks a lot. it. It looks like already the ideas for future deals are coming thick and fast. Had a chat with, with Oliver about the offerings here at Stump Cross. A use of the cinema room, I think, would be key, certainly for, for corporate parties. A great lunch on offer. If we bring on a field trip, uh, if we could use a classroom, and I think there's a real opportunity here for in schools and colleges to attract groups here. This could be somewhere to start from um, or somewhere to finish where you can finish with a nice uh, cup of tea, coffee, cake um, and it adds that extra dimension to, to the outdoors which is what we're after. It's been a tough couple of days for the family but it feels like there's finally a light at the end of Stump Cross Tunnel. Everyone was thrilled today and we had some very good feedback and you guys as a team are extremely charming and so that you'd get double ticks from me. Yeah. You just have to be a little bit more business minded yeah. and certainly in this economic climate that yeah. that is the thing that makes a difference between surviving and failing. Yeah. Good luck. I'm going to cry. Well, don't cry. It's been incredible because I couldn't have carried on. It was just too much, wasn't it? Well, so I can't time. tell you how grateful I am. The real thank you I want to hear is we're in a better position this winter than we've been before, and I yeah. would think, good, then yeah. I've done a good job. Yeah. But it is nice that you're, you're pleased. Yeah. I'm really, really happy. Yeah. Um, and it's been fun. Thank you. I mean, you. I've never done a Kevin before. <laughs> <laughs> hoping that they've really understood the point of everything I've said to them. It's about looking after the pennies, not spending the pounds. It's about reaching out to your local businesses and making sure that you engage. Absolutely amazing. A lot of the businesses we spoke to said that we could do some uh, collaboration. I just feel like it's a completely different business now. Right from the moment you walk into the caves, the wonderful shop which I'm thrilled about. So many changes. She's turned the page. Oh, completely. And she's put us onto a new Completely. Chapter, one that we're happy to be in. What is true is that they were treating this as a passion project. They now have a business that's fit for this century. I have high hopes for Stump Cross Caverns, I have to say. And the hotel inspector is back next Tuesday at nine. Coming to a duvet near you soon? Let's hope not. The Big Bed Bug Invasion shares tips on how to protect your home brand new tomorrow at eight. And tomorrow at 10, a true crime confessed during a game of truth or dare. We investigate the murder of Mary Gregory brand new.